Let's start. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I welcome all of you on behalf of uh, Mahatma Gandhi Medical College and Hospital in Jaipur, where uh, I have been working for last more than two and a half years after finishing my term uh, of more than three decades at the SCPGIMS in Lucknow. Uh, after moving here, uh, uh, we that was the COVID time. So we started an online education portal uh, called Jaipur uh, Surgical Tutorial. Uh, which my younger uh, faculty colleague, Dr. Anand Nagar, who is an associate professor in HPV surgery and liver transplant at my new institution, has been coordinating and helping me in organizing these activities. We conducted a session every Saturday, 9 to 10 Indian time in the morning, uh, which is available for anybody to join. So those of you who want to join, please contact Dr. Anand Nagar. I'll put his uh, uh, number uh, 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 I'll announce his number actually because this time uh, you, the delegates will not be able to see the chat. And uh, then uh, three months ago, we thought that we will start a monthly online masterclass. So we did the first masterclass on um, li living donor liver transplant. The second one was on safe cholecystectomy. And this is the third masterclass on chronic pancreatitis. So we have... We'll have two hours today and two hours tomorrow. And uh, I'm very happy that all the leading experts on chronic pancreatitis in the country have accepted our request to join as a faculty uh, speaker and panelists. So Dr. Anand's number to, if you want to join a Jaipur Surgical Tutorial for the delegates, please note the India country code is plus nine one. And then it is nine five nine nine seven three zero. 280. I'll try to prepare a slide and project it in between also. Plus 919599730280. So uh, uh, without any further uh, delay, uh, I think I will uh, uh, request uh, Dr. Saraswat to kindly chair this session as Dr. Chaudhary. He is actually traveling to Lucknow and he was not sure whether he will be able to join or not. So in case he joins, he'll join in between. But I'll request Dr. Saraswat um, to chair the session, first session, which is to be presented uh, by Dr. Philip Matthew from uh, Lissy Hospital in Kochi, uh, which is on medical management of chronic pancreatitis. Dr. Saraswat, please. Thank you, Vinay. Good evening to all the faculty members, panelists, as well as the delegates who have uh, logged in for this masterclass. And uh, I'd like to congratulate Vinay on this wonderful initiative. Online teaching is reaching uh, a lot of audiences and becoming increasingly popular. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome Dr. Matthew Phillip, who is the Chief of Gastroenterology. And um, he is currently the, uh, uh, I think you are the President-elect, uh, Matthew, if I'm not wrong, for uh, I, the ISG? Secretary General now. Oh, Secretary General of the ISG uh, right now. And he has been President of the SGI, the Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy in India in the past. He is at the Lissy Hospital in Kochi. Chronic pancreatitis has one of he's been is one of the areas of interest and active work for him. And I request him to talk to us about the medical management of uh, chronic pancreatitis. Matthew. Thank you, Professor Saraswat, for the kind introduction. And uh, thanks, Dr. Kapoor, uh, for uh, uh, Allow me to, uh, or give me this opportunity to be with you and uh, share some of the um, um, views in uh, medical management of chronic pancreatitis. I bring in greetings from Indian Society of Gastroenterology. And uh, we know that chronic pancreatitis is characterized by an irreversible uh, destruction of pancreatic parenchyma and ductal system, which occurs due to a long-standing inflammation, ultimately leading on to fibrosis, scarring, and this could be due to many reasons, could be genetic, could be environmental or other risk factors like alcohol, etc., etc. And it varies, the incidence varies from countries to country, but in average, it was 1.6 to 23 percentage in one lakh population in variable very different countries. And probably the prevalence is increasing because of the lifestyle changes which occurs in our community now. If you look at the management protocol, non-surgical management of protocol of uh, chronic pancreatitis, and no, a lot of new developments has occurred, not only in medical therapy, but also in endoscopic therapy. <clears throat> of course, surgery is the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, ultimate step, and it's uh, been evolutionized uh, repeatedly, and we've got wonderful surgeons across India or all, all the world doing tremendous pancreatic work. 
in my talk i would be uh, touching upon uh, talking on the following outline i will just introduce about the topic and then what, how do you manage uh, uh, pain how do you manage exocrine packet uh, insufficiency endocrine insufficiency in nutrition which is a very important aspect and bring in some new concepts like uh, painless chronic pancreatitis how what does it mean acute or chronic pancreatitis is it different or how to manage and what is the concept of group pancreatitis so when you look at the classification of chronic pancreatitis it has been classified in different ways and uh, depending upon the different uh, aspects of chronic pancreatitis uh, for example manchester classification looked at imaging modalities and clinical signs of chronic pancreatitis and abc classification is almost similar to that of manchester and m and him is a stage severity and clinical findings and it actually looks on the uh, severity and staging of the disease staging of the pancreatitis and tiger o that is the uh, etiology classification and ross mount is which is more commonly used by as endoscopic is us based criteria that is the ross mount and looking at the uh, uh, risk factor based classification systems you know we have different types of uh, risk factors like oxidative stress toxic metabolites necrosis and uh, other uh, autoimmune um, uh, recurrent and severe acute pancreatitis Uh, leading on to stone and duct, uh, uh, duct uh, obstruction, and there are different types of uh, risk factors. Ultimately, a mixture of these can lead on to sometimes chronic pancreatitis. So, when you look at the uh, phenotypic or the morphological one, it can be again a calcifying one, or it uh, where the duct is not uh, dilated much, but you see uh, focal calcification in the pancreas, or you can have an obstructive one, uh, dilated duct. Uh, whether the due to a structure or a stone obstructing or or it could be a, at least in a minority it could be autoimmune related or a, a disease which is more uh, focal uh, producing problems there is a group pancreatitis so when you make a diagnosis is basically by imaging clinical signs etc and even in a plain x ray you can sometimes see the pancreatic stones ultrasound abdomen is a good modality easily available but you know Uh, many times we may not be able to see the, see the pancreas properly, and the assessment may not be easily done. So, if you ask me, what are the major uh, modalities that on this uh, cross-section imaging, like CT scan or MRI and endoscopic ultrasound? But the most uh, commonly used one and the best one to detect stones would be the CT scan. And MRI will uh, analyze, give you an analysis of the ductal system. So, if you want to look. Uh, uh, the the best modality, if you ask me, I would say it's CT scan. But if you want to look at the ductal system, it will be MRI. But if you ask the what, which is the earliest one to diagnose, I think endoscopic ultrasound will even tell us very uh, definitely the parenchymal changes and early ductal changes. So endoscopic ultrasound is another modality which can, but it's an invasive one. So CT and MRI will be there. So when you come to the medical management, what are our main aims? You know, we know that uh, everyone who is treated for illness they want the relief of symptoms, and pain management is one of the uh, key factor in managing chronic pancreatitis. And another thing is, you know, when you treat, we also want the disease should get arrested at same level or improve, and uh, but never it should progress. So our aim is like that, but we need not succeed in always like that, and also. Many times they have complications like exocrine, endocrine disruptions, your associated features, or local complications related to chronic pancreatitis. All these need to be addressed. So whatever we do, many times you know it is not universal to every patient. You need to have an individualized or personalized approach. And many patients, some uh, may remain symptomatic despite whatever type of therapy you do. So major areas of focus on management of chronic pancreatitis one is pain, second is nutrition, very important, grossly uh, neglected one, and exocrine or not looked after properly, exocrine insufficiency, endocrine insufficiency, and complications. <coughs> the complications with that there are multiple complications that can occur because of chronic pancreatitis, which can be either uh, in the duct, in the gland itself, and uh, because so, of the. Okay. Or, or they can develop endocrine and so insufficiency and structure and the structures occurring in the pancreatic duct, structure occurring in the bile duct, pseudocyst and stones, duodenal stenosis, malnutrition occurring secondary to uh, chronic pancreatitis, vascular complications and uh, remote long-term bleeding complications like malignancy. So, but when when you look at the management of chronic pancreatitis, there are a multitude of factors which should be which should be looked in. So, it is not an easy job. 
there are multiple factors involved in that is actually the, there may be poor intake there may be malnutrition there may be hypercatabolic state diabetes neuropathy sibo oxidative stress so many factors are involved there substance abuse alcoholism ongoing inflammation so many factors so it's not an easy a uh, task to treat uh, chronic pancreatitis so many factors are involved and uh, even uh, some patients go into depression anxiety either due to the disease per se or because of substance abuse so when you look at the management of chronic pancreatitis we have got a step that is a, the initial one is the medical management then you can go for endoscopic therapy or surgery i'll be concentrating only on the medical aspect of it so when you look at the general measures of management i think the most important thing is you now you have to ask the patient to stop alcohol and tobacco why this is important if alcohol is the etiology we know that uh, the progression of the disease can be delayed by stopping alcohol why tobacco is important it also shows that you know, this can also partly uh, cause symptoms in chronic pancreatitis but most importantly uh, the uh, tobacco can actually induce uh, pancreatic carcinoma we know that chronic pancreatitis is a disease it's a higher risk factor for uh, pancreatic carcinoma and uh, the impact on pain of this uh, uh, tobacco and alcohol is quite variable but now some degree of pain relief is noted when they abstain from alcohol so coming to the one of the major areas of uh, management of chronic pancreatitis is nutrition i think why, why uh, nutrition is so important because in you know, malnutrition there are so many contributive factors which can occur in chronic pancreatitis one is the pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy secondly they have got anorexia mainly because of abdominal pain or a fear of abdominal pain actually prevents them from taking adequate food. and many times they can have nausea vomiting and sometimes you know patients can have gastroparesis because of diabetes related issues or because of local complication like group pancreatitis which can cause um omitting gastric uh, outlet compromise and consumption of alcohol can affect their nutritional status substance abuse can affect and even diabetes mellitus will affect their nutritional status so initially how do you uh, start feeding them the diet and supplement initial concept was to avoid reduce the fat intake and make them give them small meals and avoid dehydration etc etc but low fat meals you know is not supported by any data and no more recommended and we also know that gastroparesis sometimes which can occur in this patient because of diabetes they also uh, in those patients i think you know smaller meals may minimize symptoms and uh, generally when you talk that we should avoid very low fat diet except in those patients with severe pain where they cannot tolerate any food otherwise it is generally avoided that you take normal uh, fat food and especially when there is pancreatic cancer insufficiency and you are giving pancreatic cancer replacement therapy and normal diet with a normal fat intake should be good this is also important to prevent development of vitamin deficiencies which is fat dependent and ultimately lead to selective malnutrition also and uh, we also have to make sure that their bone strength should be very good because vitamin d deficiency is quite common and we need to supplement supplement with vitamin d and calcium and uh, coming to uh, nutrition supplementation with the medium chain triglycerid oil we know that uh, pancreatic um, digestion is not required uh, in medium chain triglycerid because i belong to kerala we have a lot of coconut oil and which is rich in uh, mctd uh, medium chain triglycerides but you know there is no data to suggest that you know to replace this one except in those patients where they are not able to uh, uh, tolerate uh, other types of fat we can try that nutritional assessment is a very important aspect in that and actually we should do a proper nutritional assessment not only uh, based on body mass index you know actually body mass uh, index based assessment alone is not adequate to, pre- to predict the muscle mass and functional status you actually the percentage of weight loss is a better indicator for malnutrition rather than just uh, uh, doing a single body mass index so this can be done in a different form you can have take a clinical symptom you look for organ uh, dysfunction selective uh, vitamin deficiency anthropometry biochemical examination all these are quite important and one area which actually is coming in a big way is the diagnosis of uh, sarcopenia when you do a ct scan in a patient with chronic pancreatitis always try to look at the muscle mass that will also give us an idea of uh, how bad is the nutritional status of this patient so coming to what are the recommendations you now we do this patient for diet i i would suggest that they should be encouraged to follow a normal healthy eating advice especially if the patient is otherwise okay not very seriously symptomatic 
and you have to give pancreatic enzyme um, um, uh, replacement but you know this should be enzyme insufficiency could exogenous insufficiency should be corrected with the, especially the those who are nutritionally compromised dietary counseling should be done by an experienced dietitian and should be individualized there is nothing called every all for uh, same diet for everyone but should be restricted it should be modified to each person of this need and region etc and again i am telling dietary fat restriction should be avoided especially in patients on pancreatic and say replacement therapy and when they are malnourished but, but try to avoid very high fiber diets you know because you now that can actually produce sometimes you know bloating and symptoms and especially the birth absorption can be sometimes affected so in those patients i think you know uh, high fiber diet can be reduced so in generally you give small frequent and high energy meals for those patients malnutrition Three and, more minutes, Doctor Philip. Uh, pardon. Three more minutes, please. So, coming to the management of pain associated with the chronic pancreatitis. Now, we know that the mechanism of this is ductal hypertension, or inflammatory, or neurogenic, and or because of the complications we have discussed. When you look at the pain in chronic pancreatitis, it can be classified depending upon the severity of pain as well as the frequency of pain, and this could be due to multiple mechanisms. We already discussed on that. but the neuropathic mechanisms have come in a big way and it has been found that uh, something be outside the pancreas also is responsible for causing pain and this needs to be addressed on that so when you look at for pain for chronic pancreas always uh, if the patient is not responding to the uh, therapy which you are trying to give and then you should rule out other etiologies also and uh, imaging is quite important when when you try to treat these patients and find out whether there is an extra cause like especially for malignancy etc which occurs in these patients and i think the best modality for pain is to start with acetaminophen acetaminophen or paracetamol with or without antispasmodic nsaid should be reduced because of the gastric side effect and you want to change over to a less uh, um, or a, a non narcotic uh, opioid agents like uh, tramadol which is actually uh, which is which is actually a better option as a second one and the third one actually a third level i will add as a adjective agents you know like antitriceride antidepressants or other antidepressants pregabalin or gabapentin etc but the real opioid or narcotics like morphine etc i will try to take it only on the later stage what is the role of antioxidants this has been brought in initially as a, a good modality for reducing pain and it, an indian study has shown excellent result but you know many many studies have shown the this is this could not be replicated but you need to if at all you want to give you have to give a good dose of methionine that is at least 1000 mg on that so does pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy reduce pain the studies have shown that that is not and it is not able to demonstrate any benefit on that so when you treat a pain in a chronic pancreatitis you know you have to find out uh, what is the cause of the pancreatic pain and, uh, and you try to look at lifestyle modification nutrition etc and start them uh, also ask them to stop alcohol smoking etc and then start them on medications and if they are okay then continue to follow them if they are not then you have to look for any structural abnormalities and try to address on that and always look at the psychology aspects and try to treat that and if there is neurological manifestations or if you think the neurological causes are there you need to add on this drugs like gabapentin etc <clears throat> finally if they are not going on uh, getting on better and if there is a large drug disease or an obstruction or a stricture then you go for endotherapy or surgery management coming to exocrine insufficiency i think it is quite important that nearly 90% of pancreatic function uh, should be lost if somebody gets steatorrhea and this can be due, uh, the manifestations can be very uh, varied it can be steatorrhea weight loss malnutrition metabolic down disease and even vitamin and mineral deficiencies of that nearly uh, in chronic pain is nearly 85% will have some sort of pancreatic enzyme insufficiency the clinical manifestations can be quite variable and most common clinical symptom the patient says uh, steatorrhea but most important thing is not that because you know subclinically they can go to weight weight loss and malnutrition and low mineral low bone mineral densities there are multiple challenges when we treat this patient i think the most important thing is the financial impact on that and for diagnosis you need not do a always do a full stool assess test but you can have a combination of either two of these nutritional evaluation or symptoms of malnutrition or if you are able to afford you can do a test on that the simplest test is a fecal elastase test and if the depending upon the values you can suggest whether it's or not uh, pa is not there <clears throat> 
So what are the goals of therapy for uh, PET or pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy is correct, uh, to correct pancreatic enzyme in uh, exocrine insufficiency and improve malnutrition. The dosing is what I practice is that start with a dose of 25 to 40,000 units with meals and then 10,000 units with uh, snacks that is very quite variable and monitor for symptoms and weight gain and then you adjust the dosing. And this should be taken along with meals preferably at the first uh, bolus of food. And if you don't treat adequately, you can have multiple complications like malnutrition induced and malabsorption induced problems which can occur. And when you look at the if algorithm, you could, uh, if you could summarize in a minute, yes, uh, coming to that, sir. And uh, the, when you actually uh, coming to the algorithm, it is found that there is inadequate response. Then only you should think about adding gastric acid suppression. And when there is not response, always look for other causes also. And endocrine insufficiency is basically the type 3 di C diabetes mellitus, and it has got a brittle diabetes. So you need an endocrine, st endocrine st opinion for all these things. Coming to group pancreatitis is actually... I think we will leave that because we will cover it in the uh, panel discussion. Yeah. And acute chronic pancreatitis is an uh, area which actually is getting gaining more importance and it is actually managed uh, slightly differently. And alcohol is a risk factor on that. When you look at the CT scan, you can see that there are chronic pancreatitis with... Uh, areas of fluid collection, this is actually uh, a suggestion of acute non-chronic pancreatitis. Painless chronic pancreatitis is a new entity, entity and it is found that 12% of patients with uh, uh, chronic pancreatitis, they have no pain to start with and basically mainly these are diagnosed on imaging studies. And uh, they, the functional pancreatic insufficiencies are not very severe when compared to chronic pancreatitis, classically seen in older age and there is low, low prevalence of recurrent acute pancreatitis, other uh, complications of chronic pancreatitis. I think we'll take the dis, uh, So take them home, take them home points are medical management of chronic pancreatitis is complex and should be individualized. And the proper diagnosis is quite essential. Alcohol and smoking should be discontinued. Nutritional assessment and replenishment of, uh, uh, plays a very important role in that. And pain management is the key factor and it should be individualized. Pancreatic enzyme deficiency needs to be diagnosed early and treated adequately. Diabetes is quite brittle and should be treated by an endocrinist. And in a new onset pain with weight loss, imaging is essential to roll out malignancy. Thank you so much for your patient hearing. Dr. Saraswat, you can take up the questions, please. Uh, thank you, Matthew. You've been uh, um, covered a huge area in a very little, a small uh, period of time and uh, you've hit the highlights in most of them. Now, if you I look in at the chat box, uh, maybe you can open the chat box yourself, uh, Matthew. Dr. H. Ramesh has a rather uh, long-winded question for you. So if you could please read it out and uh, reply. I would like to ask MB, uh, if it is not true that we need to check the presence and severity of pain and the presence and absence of complication by reasonably comprehensive imaging rather than simply following a stepwise medical endoscopic surgery route. I, I think this is right, you know. See, the question is not, uh, uh, it's rather a statement rather than a question. But, you know, I think, you know, always it's an imaging is very, very important rather than just going by step by step. Many times, you know, we start with medical management. Sometimes we switch over immediately to surgical management rather than waiting for medical management for long. I don't know whether I have uh, answered. I'm allowed, this. doesn't really tell us about detailed assessment of pain, pain severity, pain patterns to answer Dr. Ramesh's question. The steps in the management are as uh, Matthew has said, but how do you proceed from A to B to C? I guess it needs more time and individualized patients to no, discuss. 15, 15 minutes, you, know, you cannot even uh, discuss pain management. Yes, okay. indeed. So I think we can move. No, no, to the I think what Dr. Please. Ramesh wants probably wants to know is, are there any patients in whom you don't start with medical management? Are there any patients which directly go to intervention, whether endoscopic or surgical? Yes, sir. If the patient is having a complication, like, you know, a patient has got already a mass and if it looks like a malignancy or a patient has got a, a acute tone chronic pancreatitis first presentation and there is a big stone impacted there, though considerably managed for time being and then take up the patient for surgery or endotherapy. Or the patient has come, to, come with a recurrent acute pancreatitis and there is a pancreas divisum. You need that the patient requires a pancreatic stenting. Or a patient has you got a dominant structure in the pancreatic head, endotherapy versus uh, surgery needs to be addressed on that. Straight away surgery, I think, you know, we have to see a big chunk of stones. Actually, I want to show some slides also, but big chunk of stones. At least there is any role for endotherapy. In those patients, you know, after conservative treatment, if this is not responding, we will immediately go for surgery. But I think every patient 
there should be some role for convers- conservative medical therapy at least to improve the nutritional status and assess for pancreatic enzyme insufficiency and treat also look for diabetes status so without that we cannot just take up a patient. take up a okay patient. i think and we move to the next question there are a couple more to cover matthew uh how does one calculate requirements and dose of uh, pert yes that's why i told you, you know when when uh, uh, we give for a major meals look at the pattern of food he is taking and i think you know the commonest meal which we take in india requires at least 25000 to 40000 depending upon the fat content you take so what happens in many patients you now they stop taking and even the physicians recommend not to take fat which is a wrong thing if you want to improve the nutritional status of that of course during an acute pain you advise them not to take fat fatty food otherwise i would suggest that 25000 to 40000 per meal a major meal is the standard one and now we have even a preparation available we can actually one pressing you can get 10000 units so you can actually depending upon the type of food you take uh, you can add that western diets requires more of course i agree that their their recommendation is uh, 60000 to 75000 but uh, in india what i practice is 25000 to 40000 per major meal of course it's a cost in continuation with that you could take up dr kamal ji's question about differences between dosage and types of formulations for pain versus exocrine insufficiency i thought you said that there is no place for enzyme replacement therapy i did not, I did not show i did not show the slide of uh, market preparations available i have a side of that because that doesn't look good but you know generally what we use is for pancreatic pain at present we generally don't use pert as a line of management what is it basically for pancreatic enzyme insufficiency and those in diabetic you know they if they are not improving you have to see whether they have got uh, additional pancreatic enzyme uh, replacement improves their diabetic status also because you know malnutrition impaired absorption maldigestion all produces even poor diabetes control also then another is role of celiac pl- axis block i think doctor um, um, Uh, who is you are going to talk on that so yes, dr nipun is going to cover that uh, tomorrow but in case you want to make a quick comment about it see, actually i tell you in patients with uh, chronic pancreatitis celiac block is not a wonderful thing but in in uh, pancreatic malignancy celiac neurolysis makes sense why because you know i have seen i have done it earlier now i stopped it when uh, very desperate situations you can try because you know you are injecting steroids there and this is not the uh, permanent solution it is a temporary solution at i think you know it should be reserved for really really important patient really really uh, very selective patients and i generally uh, don't do that role of celiac and then is duration of opioid in cp it is quite variable no if the patient has got a large duct dis- disease i won't wait for long i take it takes about the patient for surgery or endotherapy what was necessary small duct disease you know many times we have to put them on that but i tell many times i have seen these patients are on substance abuse that they are continuing on alcohol in those patients has to be handled well otherwise i think you know duration you wait for 2 to 3 months not more than that because we don't want to create any ad- addiction for these patients and generally we take up them for other modalities of treatment and uh, role of uncoated so we already discussed you know uncoated in those patients where we have just been uh, introduced in the market for pancreatic pain but it's not no longer used in this patient no no longer used for that young adult with no pain but dilated duct and calcification no diabetes should the duct be drained endoscopically or surgically anticipating later problems you know i think you know at present for chronic pancreatitis we have no justification to do any intervention if the patient has no symptoms there is a thought process earlier or even now those who have been intervened those who have been operated those patients the chances of malignancy other complications can come down but there we need more data for that person we have no data to intervene any patient and especially an young patient that uh, uh, the that the question why uh, um, this is why dwariga is huh? a question it has been asked probably i think you know once you arrest this progression at the uh, very young age can we prevent further damage of pancreas that is what the question what the mind of the question that is you no know, you can reduce exocrine insufficiency you can reduce diabetes development i think you know we have no data to say that we need more data or such uh, or uh, uh, documentation for that how many cp patients can be kept successfully on medical therapy 
uh, how many would go for surgery how many are kept from surgery uh, kept uh, from surgery although medical therapy failed? see if you look at uh, the whole number of patients one that patient can be managed with medical therapy the rest will ultimately go some sort of uh, 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 this is actually not a uh, lifelong procedure but no time bound at least no temporarily we can maintain them for on their patients but you know majority of the patients ultimately they may go in for surgery or pancreatic cancer therapy it depends upon the ductal morphology it depends upon the stone um, 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 volume and the presence of stones are many factors involved in that so i think you know Uh, at least a small subgroup of patient can be maintained on medical therapy i will slightly mix the two questions asked by dr ramesh and dr kamal ji so young patient symptomatic pain and hugely dilated duct large calculi in the head body and going up to tail would you still give medical therapy to this patient no, or would you straight I, away go for surgery i will prefer this patient for surgery but i will improve that i answer only yeah. i will improve his nutrition yes i will reduce his pain and i will make him more comfortable for the surgeons to handle him dr saraswat your concluding remarks for about 3 to 4 minutes well i think uh, most of the issues have been dealt with and it as much depth as the time permits by dr uh, philip um i think points that are coming up repeatedly in the questions that need reiteration is that today there is no convincing data and in fact there are negative studies to the effect that pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy whether coated or uncoated does not help in pain does not give pain relief and should no longer be recommended for pain what is clear is that pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy needs to be given for exocrine insufficiency now uh, many of us prescribe the right doses but you many of us in practice observe that our patients seldom take the medications in the doses advised for the simple reason that they are expensive medicines and uh, symptoms uh, of troublesome steatorrhea etc get alleviated with relatively low doses so you'll often find you prescribe three tablets they are taking one tablet they are not gaining weight biochemical monitoring with fecal fat excretion shows no Im- marginal improvement in steatorrhea nevertheless uh, the this state of the order of uh, uh, matters continues so that is uh, there now i think in many of the questions medical manage has been taken as a short form for pain management so when you go to surgery you don't go to surgery for exocrine endocrine insufficiency for other uh, aspects all of which is medical management so regardless of the need to go to endotherapy or surgical therapy for pain management medical management has to be implemented in all patients because there will be nutritional deficiencies as matthew has pointed out their exocrine and endocrine insufficiency has to be monitored and treated and uh, other issues are there so medical therapy would remain in applicable to every single patient with chronic pancreatitis over a period of time yes the other issues are uh, i think await a lot of data cpn or uh, celiac plexus block i think matthew has rightly uh, mentioned that in chronic pancreatitis in case no other option is available for reasons of frailty or ill health or being unfit for surgery one might want to resort but as a primary modality it has almost uh, no role because it gives very transient relief and is not a very repeatable modality whereas in pancreatic cancer for the short term alleviation of pain it is a fairly useful uh, modality i guess uh, my yeah, time is over so yeah. these aspects right okay vinay back to you can i, sir, is, can, can I yes. make one point again yes please please go ahead just that make sure that you don't tell the patient not to take fatty food always tell them take adequate you pay for pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy and tell the patient not to take this is a very common thing i see tell telling by the physicians or surgeons uh, reduce your fat intake no actually it's incorrect always you tell them take normal fat intake then only the the fat will work and he will improve on weight thank you so much for this wonderful can, can i make a quick comment just yes, just a comment yes please ah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah so the other thing is about the dietitians i i have stopped sending this patient to dietitians because i think they should be more sensitive about the biology of the disease invariably they'll give a blanket treatment don't take this don't take moong ke dal don't take all this 
uh, don't take idli dosa so so i think i think uh, that's not correct i mean di- dietitians also needs to be sensitized and uh, so that the patient gets the benefit physicians and also so. physicians also <laughs> yeah physicians <laughs> of course i mean <laughs> dietitians yes rup jyoti is quite right <laughs> I think physicians yeah. are more. Uh, we have to educate physicians more on that. Uh, Rubjyoti, thank you. Nice seeing you. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank Same you. here, thank sir. Thank you, Dr. Same Philip. Thing. There is a compliment yeah. uh, for you. Excellent talk by the speaker, and thank you, Dr. Saraswat, for chipping in at the last minute. Uh, and Dr. Ramesh also says there is no evidence that any diet will relieve pain. So I think uh, we are uh, more or less uh, on a consensus here. So with that, we end the first uh, session. Thank you very much.